Over the years of meeting many photography and video professionals, as well as enthusiasts, I've noticed that they all have one piece of hardware in common, apart from a camera and a lens, and that is a good photography monitor. Now, color management is something that is super crucial in getting the perfect image and managing the colors the way you want it to be when you're editing. Also super important when you're printing as well. So what we're going to do today is we're gonna go over color management, the different types of photography monitors and monitors in general, and recommend some of our favorite monitors for you to get going on your color management journey. Now I'm sure everyone watching this video has experienced at least once in their lifetime that an image looks completely different on their screen and completely different on their phone. Now this is where color management comes in. Color management ensures that your product, whether it be a video or photo, is graded properly and managed well so that it looks basically the same on no matter what device you're looking at it from. Furthermore, it's also super important if you're looking to print your photo. A lot of people kind of edit their photo on screen, say it looks schmick, and then they go to the printing lab and it comes out completely different. Now, color management will ensure that the colors and everything that you've done in your editing basically translate out to the print almost perfectly. So with color management, there are a couple things to think about. First of all is the color range. So you have sRGB and RGB, which is basically the color space that you'll be working in, and also the effects that a monitor might have when you're editing a photo. Now we're going to go over the three different types of monitors and how they can affect your photography or video editing. Now I know most of you out there have computers and some of you might already have a photography ready monitor and maybe the majority of you don't have a good photography monitor. So before we dive into the specific features you need to look out for when choosing a monitor, we'll go through the first thing and probably the most simplest one is the panel type. Out right now, there are three very common monitor types. Firstly, you've got TN, you've got VA, and you have IPS. Starting off with TN, if you were born in the 90s and earlier, you'd be familiar with TN monitors and CRT monitors as they were at one point the only accessible monitor to the market. The TN monitor is super responsive and very favored amongst gamers. And it's got a fast response time and a high refresh rate so that you can get the smoothest gameplay performance possible. However, TM monitors are not really ideal for photographers and videographers out there as one, they have a poor viewing angle and two, they are not the most color accurate and I'll touch on those points a little bit later. Secondly, you have VA models, which is a little bit step up of the TN in terms of viewing angle and color accuracy. Now it does have a stronger color contrast ratio as well, and it's mostly popularized through televisions. Now VA, although is pretty good, there's one step up, even better, and now in 2020, more accessible than ever. And now onto the last monitor type, which is even more accessible now in 2020, is the IPS monitor, which is the most popular monitor for photographers and videographers. Now the IPS monitor boasts by far the best color contrast ratio. It has the best color accuracy as well as the best viewing angle. Now in terms of viewing angle, if you don't know what that is, it's basically allowing the same performance no matter which angle you are looking at. Now with a TN monitor, the best performance you get is if you sit dead on straight to the monitor. Whereas an IPS monitor such as this BenQ SW240, you can look at it from 178 degrees to the side of the monitor and you'll still get good performance as if you were to sit in front of the monitor. Now this makes it really popular for photographers who are looking to take their monitor out and if they've got clients looking or if they're filming and they need people to look onto the monitor, multiple people at the same time, then an IPS monitor will give you the best performance. Whereas a TM monitor, you look at it on the side, it'll be a lot darker. Whereas you look at it straight, then you get the performance that you need. So in this video, we're going to be recommending at the end, a couple IPS monitors that we believe that photographers and videographers can benefit from. Now, a couple other things to note when you're looking for your next monitor. Firstly, the color accuracy. There are two main things you need to look at. Firstly is the RGB rating, 
which is the universal color space and you have Adobe sRGB. Now, a lot of TM monitors and a lot of other monitors do boast a pretty high RGB rating. However, as I said, the viewing angle may not be ideal. If you're in an environment where your room changes lighting a lot or you don't quite sit directly in front of your monitor, then a TM monitor may not be ideal. Going for an IPS monitor like the BenQ SW240 will allow you to get the best color accuracy as well as viewing angle. So no matter what environment you're in, you can edit your photos the best to its ability. So this particular model, the BenQ SW240, has a rating of 99% RGB color space, which means that it covers for 99% of the color space and you've got 100% sRGB rating. So with Adobe, you're gonna get the full color space out of it and it's gonna be accurate. The second rating you need to look out for is the Delta E rating, which measures the amount of change in the visual perception of two colors. Now, to put it simply, when you're looking for a monitor and checking the Delta E range, the lower the number is and the closer it is to one, the better it is. Your eye can normally see color error of a Delta E rating of three and above, and most high-end monitors such as the BenQ monitor we have with us has a Delta rating of E2, and most of them do have an E2 rating. Only people with a really trained eye for color can detect the color variances. And finally, the more common trait to look at is the resolution. Most monitors are available in Full HD and 4K, for photographers, you can go either Full HD or 4K. 4K if you want a little bit more detail when you're zooming in and getting all those elements out. And video is probably more lenient towards the 4K monitor over the Full HD as the industry standard is moving towards 4K. One thing to note as well, ultra-wide monitors are becoming more popular, especially with gamers and people who watch a lot of movies but may not be ideal for photographers and videographers because you don't get as many pixels in height. So in terms of monitors we recommend, we definitely recommend going for the BenQ range. Now BenQ have proven time and time again that they've got the best color accuracy and management and they've been proving so in the professional industry for years. Now we're stocking the full range of BenQ monitors, link it in the description below if you want to have a check out but we're gonna recommend two of our favorite monitors today that we believe are great for photographers and videographers. The first one being the BenQ SW240 monitor. Now the BenQ SW240 monitor packs a resolution of 1920 by 1080, so it's a full HD monitor. And with its color rating, it does have a 99% RGB and a 100% sRGB rating. And now it's also got a grayscale mode as well. So if you do like editing in black and white and you want to kind of see the proper contrast that your black and white photo is going to get, working in that black and white mode is the most ideal. Now in terms of color representation, as I mentioned earlier, it does have a Delta E rating of two. And to help with that, it has a 14 bit LUT table or a lookup table to basically help seamlessly blend the RGB colors. And finally, like most cameras out there now, it does boast a 10-bit color depth, which gives you a lot of color range to work with. Hence why the SW240 is extremely accurate, giving you the most color space as you can get. Now, this is a kind of entry to mid-level monitor that I believe would be perfect for any beginner, video or photographer, adding it to their arsenal. And to help with those environments where it's really sunny or your room constantly changes, there's an optional sun hood that you can get for the SW240 that you can just attach onto it to help out with those really sunny conditions. And secondly, another monitor that we love but we don't have with us today is the BenQ 32-inch 321C. Now it basically boasts a similar rating to the SW240 in the sense that it is a 99% RGB monitor, has 100% sRGB, and it does have a grayscale mode. Now where it differs is it has a 16-bit lookup table for even better RGB blending, and it also has a Delta E rating of two. Now the biggest difference between that monitor and the SW240 is that it is 4K, which makes it a big difference for any photographer or videographer looking to really get the minor details down and getting the most out of their real estate in terms of a monitor and in terms of editing as well. 
And finally, one of the neatest features about both of these monitors is that they can be put into portrait mode. So if you don't have enough space on your table, or if you're looking to edit in a vertical format, you can do that, which is pretty cool. So in conclusion, when you're out there looking for your next photography and video monitor, these are the things you need to look out for. Firstly, the color accuracy, whether it's 99% RGB or 100% sRGB, you need it to get as much color space as you can. Secondly, the Delta E rating. The closer it is to one, the better. Going for a two Delta E rating is probably the most standard at the moment. So try to look for a monitor with a Delta E rating of two. Thirdly, the resolution. If you like editing the really small details or if you shoot video, then going a 4K monitor would be more ideal. Otherwise, you do have a full HD monitor option available out there if you're just getting into the swing of things. And that pretty much wraps up our video for today. If you wanna have a look at the full BenQ range or have a look at any of the monitors that I presented today, check them out in the description below. Make sure to follow us on our social media channels. We have a Facebook, Instagram page. Um, we upload regular giveaways as well as events on both of those social media channels. Make sure to check them out in the description as well. Finally, we do have a written blog where all of our reviews and basically anything that goes through this channel, if you wanna look at a more written and more detailed insight into any one of the products that we display, head over to our blog and also our blog lists our events and workshops as well if you want to upskill your photography or video game. As always, if you enjoyed our video, hit the like and the subscribe button to stay updated with our latest updates as we upload videos quite frequently.